now we have let go of everything be in the presence of God praise his holy name because he is our God he is the one who saves he is the God that died for us for our sins the least we can do is praise his name so let every praise let everything that we say do just one thing let us glorify God Amen Amen
There are no storms in our life. The enemies that come before us, we will raise a hallelujah. We will stand against it. Proclaim the name of Jesus. Amen. So hallelujah In the presence of my enemy Hallelujah. Praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, you have defeated that, Lord Jesus. You have taken all our 
our sins, Lord Jesus. You have committed on the cross, Lord Jesus. We live in you, Lord Jesus. Praise the heart of you, Lord. Every situation of our life, Lord Jesus. When we are fighting the most, Lord Jesus. When we forget you, Lord Jesus, Lord. Jesus, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Praise the heart of you. In our songs, Lord Jesus. In our doubts, in our bodies, Lord Jesus. We believe in Lord. We trust in you, Lord Jesus. Praise the heart of you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Jesus, praise you, Lord. Jesus himself took all our sins and bore it on a cross so that we would live in righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. Do you believe this, brothers and sisters? We are healed by the precious blood of Jesus. Our sicknesses, our problems right now, leave it at the foot of the cross. Pin it on that cross right now at this moment and leave it there. He is healing you. He is touching you. All we need to do is believe. He is reaching out his hand to you. Brothers and sisters, now is the time to reach back out to the Lord. He is breaking the chains in our life. He is healing us, delivering us from every single thing that is holding us back from reaching that kingdom of God. He is calling upon us. Let us do what we can to glorify and reach that kingdom. Reach out to the Lord right now at this moment. You have overcome death because of the Lord. Lean on the Lord right now. Focus on Him. Claim, trust the blood of Jesus right now. Yeah. Hey.
your meaning, our Lord Jesus. Nothing, nothing begins and ends without you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord. We trust in you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you. Let us continue to be in the presence of God. Call upon, Lord. Call upon the Spirit of God into our hearts, into our minds right now at this moment. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. You supply all our needs, Lord Jesus. Whoever believes in you shall not perish but have eternal life. Lord Jesus, right now we are here gathered in your presence. We proclaim, Lord Jesus, our belief in you. Your name, Lord Jesus, is enough to save us all. We proclaim, we believe, Lord Jesus, in this word, this moment. Take complete control of our lives, Lord Jesus, at this moment. Send our hearts and minds and believe you to your spirit. O spirit of God, take complete control. Amen.
Lord, continue to be in this presence of God and prepare ourselves to receive the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's invite the Lord Jesus in our midst to come and take complete control. Let's give all free praises to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, praise you, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come, Lord Jesus, in our midst, Lord Jesus, and take complete control of us, Lord. Holy Spirit, let your power come, Holy Spirit. Let your word be manifested in to us, Lord Jesus. Let it be you who speaks to us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We want to hear you, Lord. We want to hear your voice, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord, and set us free, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. How are you all today? Good. Are you getting ready for Christmas? Yes. Are you getting ready to invite the Lord Jesus? Yes. Let's start with understanding what is freedom? Can anyone of you tell us what is freedom? Just freedom in general. Doing what you want. Doing what you want or doing what I want, yeah, wearing what I want, uh, not having any curfew times, especially for the youth over here, uh, going wherever I want, basically doing what I want, whatever pleasures that I want, everything about me, right, that is freedom. The famous song also says, I want to break free, so I want to break free, I want freedom. Everybody is seeking this freedom. Especially in the world, when we understand freedom, we see something like this. It's all about yourself, what you want, what you want to achieve, where you want to go, how you want to go. Nobody to stop us. Boundless, something we, we don't have any bounds, we don't have any inhibitions, anything that is stopping us. Something that we can be set free and feel free and go free anywhere we want. But what does the Lord tell us? What is freedom? Let's look at... John chapter 8 verses 31 onwards. Can someone read this? John chapter 8 verse 31. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. And 32. And you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. So what the Lord is saying is that you can be free. You can enjoy that freedom. But you continue in my word. In some versions they say you abide in my word. And then you will know the truth. But you have to be my disciples. You abide in my word. Be my disciples. You will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. But what is written over here and what Jesus says is totally opposite from what the world tells us. It's not about <clears throat> the freedom of doing what we want and ourselves, but it's saying over here, follow me, become my disciples, abide in my word, or continue in my word. It's, there is a condition which says, if, if you continue in my word, if you become my disciples, you will be set free. Amen. So, why does the Lord tell us something very opposite from what the world tells us? Because the Lord is calling us to a different kind of freedom, which only comes from Jesus. If you think about it, are we really in this freedom? Like, do we really need that freedom? We are not in uh, prison or we are not enslaved by anyone in today's generation. We are not enslaved, we are not imprisoned, we are still, we are free. We might all think like that, right? That we are all free. So why is the Lord talking about freedom? Why are we even seeking all this freedom? Everybody, all of us are talking about freedom. The same way Jesus' disciples in the same chapter, his disciples also ask Jesus that we are free, we are not slaves, uh, we, are not, uh, we are the Jews, we are free, we are not slaves. So what, I, what freedom are you talking about? And Jesus explains further in verse 34. Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. Amen? Amen. So every time we commit sin, 
we become slaves to sin even us today so and that is what results in us wanting to always be seek that freedom so when we seek freedom from the world we may think that sometimes maybe doing what i want dressing how i want um, <clears throat> drinking what i want eating what i want it will give us those pleasures but it will be momentary it will be for some time after that after some time when we keep doing all those things whatever we want we will just give in and it it will come and it will catch us even more we will be able, we will lose control of ourselves and when we lose control of ourselves that is when we become slaves slaves to sin or slaves to not us to not not be in control of ourselves the lord is not in control of us and we are not in control of ourselves let's see how we in today's times how are the different ways where we become slaves to sin we might think we are all okay we we come to church we do everything we go for confessions we are all okay <clears throat> we are not slaves to sins this was only may be applicable to people who are really really uh, sinful who have not been been for confessions for a long time but it actually affects us even today because we are all sinners we are all fall short we are all sinners so then <clears throat> the first time we see is that sometimes we can be blinded where we don't understand how sin is affecting us we may think everything is fine or it could be some of the people who we know are uh, we may be able to understand this better when we think about people who we know it could be our family members where we see that they are uh, they are doing something wrong maybe they are not and you don't know what to tell them maybe you will tell them once and they get aggravated they get angry and then they sometimes there will be even there will be pride and say no you don't know anything you you don't know anything i am not like this way i am not doing this particular thing but we can be in the same position as well where we are blinded to our own sins and sometimes when we are told about these sins so we get this revelations we still don't listen we still don't believe that yes we have done something wrong or we are doing something wrong so one time it could be that we are blinded by the sin in these kind of situations especially when we have to deal with other people who are having this we can try to speak to them once but if they come back to us they get angry they become defensive then my dear brothers and sisters just pray and leave it to the lord but pray offer it to the lord do not just let go saying okay let them do what they want they will have their own punishment when they when they get it pray ask the lord to take control of that situation ask the lord to take control to reveal the situation to them so that they are able to understand this and even in our own ways there may be many times where we are committing and we don't believe it and we don't understand where we are blind every day my dear brothers and sisters let's pray and ask the lord to reveal to us what are those situations and where have we gone wrong amen ask the lord to reveal our hidden sins as well because sometimes we may not know what we are doing wrong whether it is right or wrong <clears throat> an example would be uh sometime back there was this uh, uh there were these friends of mine who you know they going to th- therapy uh, and there is something which they are doing called hypnosis hypnosis and hypnotherapy and they were explaining it to me and i thought okay it sounds fine it's it sounds like it is a scientific thing uh it's not something occult and uh, so maybe it is fine maybe you know i can also try it and see what is what is this all about and um thank god that you know i the some time back i was watching a video by an exorcist priest in the us and he was giving talking about exorcism and how the spirits take control of you and everything and he also spoke about this very same point on hypnosis and hypnotherapy that even this is not according to the will of god because when you do go for these kind of things you are giving allowing something else to take control of you and the moment we allow anything else whether it is alcohol whether it is drugs whether it is other people the loss of love uh, anything else to take control of us even whether it is hypnotherapists or things like that that is when the spirits the demons or anything else can come and take control of us and we are not with the lord we are not in control of ourselves because we are giving it away we are giving that right for freedom away 
Because the Lord has given us that freedom. He has given us that free, free will to choose. But when we are choosing something else to take control of us, we are giving the right away. And this is just an example of how we need to look and see where are the things that we could be going wrong without knowing this. We may go to uh, other people for help, maybe uh, to some astrologers or anyone else thinking that we will get some immediate help, immediate effect, immediate solutions. But this is when we are not, we are, we are again seeking someone else instead of the Lord. So we are giving the control to something else instead of the Lord. When we give that control away, sin takes over. Sin takes over our life. And uh, in these kind of situations, as I said, we don't need to go and shout and uh, be angry with the people who we are supposed to, you know, we are trying to guide and give guidance to. But the Lord says, uh, St. Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 24 to 26. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, so we should not fight if we want to be with the Lord. But kindly to everyone, an apt teacher, patient, correcting opponents with gentleness. So we need to be gentle with those who we are trying to uh, correct, if we are trying to correct. Otherwise, just leave it to the Lord and pray and ask the Lord to take control. God may perhaps grant that they will repent and come to know the truth. So God will do that. And they may escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. Amen? Amen. So many times it could be our children, it could be our parents, it could be our spouses, anyone who we feel is not coming to the Lord or not doing the will of the Lord, who has gone astray. We don't just leave them. We pray for them. We ask the Lord. Maybe we think, okay, this person has gone, let them go. I am leaving my life. As long as I am leaving my life, as long as God is with me, it's fine. But that's not the way the Lord wants us to be because our whole family, the family members that we have, we are all called to bring them into holiness of the Lord. That is our purpose in the life. And that is why we need to pray for all of them. Even if they may not be with you right now, they might have left and gone, we still need to pray for them. Kneel down, ask the Lord to take control and pray for these family members who would have, who would have left. Ask them to come. Ask, <clears throat> ask the Lord to make them come to Him, to know Him and to for their souls to be saved as well. Amen? Amen. And then we could also have some times where we are enslaved through ancestors' sins especially the family members and ancestor sins where it would have not been confessed, unconfessed sins from our ancestors. Now, maybe they are not living, they are uh, done what is done and what is gone, but it gets revealed to you through maybe it's through spiritual counselors, counselors and everything. In these kind of situations as well, we need to ask the Lord to take control of those situations. We know it. We know that this has happened or something that has happened and it is affecting us. But the Lord Jesus is there with us to take control of all of that, to remove all of that. We confess. We ask the Holy Spirit to come. We pour the precious blood upon those situations at those times where this is affecting us so that the Lord will take complete control and set us free again from those bondages. Because even through that, we can have bondages in our life, whether it's through our finances, whether it's through our health, uh, whether it's through our uh, genetics, especially our health uh, that is affecting us. Anything that is affecting us, we leave it to the Lord. We ask the Lord to come in those situations. Then we also know, which most of us I think over here, or as, as long as we are coming in the journey of the Lord, one thing would be where we know that something that is wrong, but we are still doing it. We are not able to control ourselves in those situations. There could be many situations. Um, the Lord said, I mean, in uh, Romans it is written, uh, chapter 7, verse 19. I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. So even St. Paul said this. Imagine, someone so holy, someone so revered as St. Paul also went through this. And many of us go through this. Many of the times, we know something is wrong, we do it, and then we realize, oh, I wish, I might, I want to stop doing this. I want to not be able to do this. And they could be big things like addictions or they could be even smaller things. They could be anything small 
like uh, you know something like gluttony uh, like maybe we think it's food so what if food is there god has given us food we should take pleasure in all of that but when we overeat when we have gluttony it could lead to us you know it uh, having uh, effects of on our health on obesity on so many other things that it could affect us then also sometimes the thought of being alone we can be enslaved by these thoughts and what if i'm alone what if my husband passes away or husband leaves me what if my children are not there what if i have nobody in this world how if i'm alone that is also an enslavement that's also somehow where we get enslaved then also it could be um, sometimes we are have fear many times we have fear to do anything fear of commitment fear of making decisions fear of uh, talking boldly to people there could be so much of this fear that has affected us throughout our life and this fear is stopping us from living that complete freedom in christ from being able to just go and talk it could even be something like that where fear is stopping us that fear is also an enslavement it's coming from the devil it doesn't come from the lord men sometimes also it could be workaholics many of us sometimes we are working and working and working even late nights and everything um, even when the work is actually not urgent and everything we still want to finish it off because we want to complete it in, in this particular thing because we want to show that we are working or we want to feel that we are working because work gives us that purpose in life but that is also at the end of the day it's going to only stress you out going to give you mental physical stress all of that and it takes away from your time with the lord so it is taking you away from the lord as well and in the opposite it could also be laziness many times we are lazy we don't want to do certain things we want to sit and watch maybe tv uh, binge watching episodes and tv all all through the day and that eats into our time with the lord that eats into our uh, daily tasks that we have to do whether it is work at home whether it is work outside so that kind of laziness and over in uh binging in things as well uh is something which is an enslavement because we are not able to control that we want to control watching maybe we'll watch only for half an hour only for one hour but we are not able to do that as soon as something comes on we want to continuously keep watching lie down on the sofa and keep watching it continuously because again this is something that we cannot control then it could be anger our anger is an emotion but if it's something that makes us burst out whether we fight we shout at someone we beat someone we do these kind of actions it is something which is in an enslavement because we are very short tempered if you are very short tempered we are not able to control our anger we are not able to control these things this is where the devil is working in us making us take that out and as you have understood over here through all these examples how does the lord how does the sin enslave us it is through not having control of ourselves and the lord is not being in control we are choosing to do something else we are choosing sin instead of the lord or we are choosing that laziness we are choosing that um uh, uh alcohol and these kind of things instead of the lord so it's the choice that we are making our god has given us that free will from the time the world was made but we make the choices we make the choices to choose sin instead of the lord and the lord's love and through these choices is when sin enters into our lives and we get enslaved not because of anything else it is through our actions and through our choice and if we read in the same chapter uh, in uh, john chapter 8 verses 36 we see here that so if the lord makes you free you will be free indeed we heard this many times that if the lord makes you free you will be free indeed it's written up by your the condition again if the lord makes you free you will be free indeed and do you know that the lord has made you free has the lord made you free <laughs> we had the songs today most of the songs were about being set free so if you talk about break every chain the third song that we took we said there is power in the name of jesus to break every chain amen, amen. 
It's not one chain, but it's every chain. And every time we come for prayer, every time we come for the prayer meeting, during the anointing sessions and everything, we talk all we sing, we ask the Lord every time to break those chains, to set us free, to deliver us, to deliver us from all these bondages. But it's important to understand that why, what are those bondages and why are they affecting us. Sometimes we may not even know them, but they might still be affecting us. So Christ gives us freedom, but again we must choose to be free. So when we read in Galatians chapter 5 verses 13, can someone read this? Galatians chapter 5 verses 13. <coughs> again telling us over here that you were called for freedom. You were made for freedom. From the very beginning God gave us freedom. It's not like he said no, this is how you must go as a robotic uh, robots in your life. Follow me, this exactly do this, exactly do that. The Lord said do these kind of things. He gave us the laws but he gave us choice. He gave us the free will. You we were made for free will and do not but do not use, he says, only do not use this freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. When we look at that freedom, when we are looking at that self-indulgence and my desires and what I want to do, how I want to be uh, doing everything, whatever I want to do, wherever I want to do, that is the self-indulgence where we are indulging in all of that. Whether it's the addictions, whether it's the things that we can't control. We are indulging in all of that and that self-indulgence in our self-pleasures and because of that we are not choosing God. We are not choosing the freedom that the Lord gives us. And it also says over here, but through love become slaves for one another. That means love one another, submit and love one another completely. Use that freedom to love one another and not for self-indulgence. Give it to each other and not for self-indulgence and for ourselves. Now, also today we were singing and Chris brought this topic of how when the Lord came, He died for us and through that we all were saved. This is something we have been listening to from our childhood that Jesus came, He died for our sins and we got freedom from sins. He removed sin. Right? So the moment we were baptized, we also died in that sin. As Jesus died, he took away that sin, that original sin, through our baptism. So the moment we were baptized, we got rid of that original sin. And then we got the new life. So we were born again, we got new life, we believed that the Lord is our Savior throughout our life, and we got that new life. He has called us to new life. So when we choose, when He sets us free, when He gives us freedom, He is giving us that new life, which is eternal life and not death. When we choose this, the sin and the slavery of sin, it leads to death. When we say death, it means the sin and uh, the Satan taking over us and it leading us to death, but not getting the eternal life and the life that God wants us to be uh, living, which is a fulfilled life without any bondages, without any of those feelings that are enslaving us. Okay? And um, we also believe today, in fact, in the, I think the first reading, it was there that he was sent to proclaim the liberty to the captives. So the purpose, the whole idea, the purpose and the main reason why our Lord came over here, he died for us, he lived, he died for us, was so that he can proclaim liberty, that is freedom, to the captives, the ones who are born in bondage, the ones who are in bondage of sin. And in Romans chapter 6 verses 9 we have, death no longer has dominion over him. So once the Lord has died for us, death has no dominion over him, has no dominance over the Lord. The Lord has done it. He has set us free through his death. He has given us that new life and he has set us free to the death. 
So in this whole time, we know it. We know that from the childhood that we have been saying, okay, the Lord has come, He has set us free, and death has no dominion over it. But do we believe in this? Do we believe that our God has really set us free, and death has no dominion over Him? And when death has no dominion over Him, sin cannot have any control over us as well. Amen. Amen. And uh, in Romans chapter six. Verses 12, we have, therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. So we know that death has no dominion over our Jesus. Therefore, sin has no dominion over us. But how does that happen? Why do we go astray? Why, does, why do we have these bondages? Why do we have these feelings that are entrapping us and enslaving us? Because... It's written over here, do not let sin exercise dominion. So we are letting sin exercise dominion. It's because of our actions. It's because of the choice that we are making that sin is taking dominion over us. Otherwise, sin cannot take dominion over us. And that is something we need to be very clear and know and believe today. That sin has no control over us. Amen? And uh, in Galatians 5, uh, verse 1, For freedom, Christ has set us free. So for freedom, Christ has set us free. Again, therefore, stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. So St. Paul is telling us through all these different uh, letters, he says that the Lord has set you free. Believe in it. But do not let sin come into your life again. Do not submit to the yoke of slavery, of sin. Do not again go back to that. Do not do that. Amen? Amen. So what is the solution now? <clears throat> we spoke a lot about how sin is entrapping us, enslaving us. Even today, even if we are in, in the Lord and we have been coming for the prayer and everything, sin still is somewhere trying to entrap us, trying to enslave us. Maybe not successful always, sometimes maybe. But how do we actually stand? Because it will keep happening. It's not like the sin will never try to uh, come to us. Like I said, even St. Paul himself, even though he was so spiritual, he also had those attacks that were coming to him. We will keep having that. But how do we stay strong? How do we hold strong in the Lord? So let's look at Romans chapter 6 verses 13. In fact, the whole chapter of Romans uh, chapter 6 talks all about coming out of slavery. Verse 13. No longer present yourselves or your members to sin as instruments of wickedness. So no longer do that. But present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness for sin has no dominion over you so since you are not under the law but under grace so St. Paul tells us over here that present your members that present yourself and your body your mind, your thoughts as instruments of righteousness so maybe at times we have done uh, uh, certain things in our life. But when we come to the Lord, when we confess our sins, when we ask the Lord for pardon, we, we repent and we ask the Lord to take control of those situations that are bothering us, that have bondage over us, that are stopping us from living that life that the Lord wants us to lead. That is when we need to live that life of righteousness, submit to righteousness. Submit to obedience. And what is righteousness? It's the life of holiness, of sanctification. So throughout our journey from today onwards, from now onwards, when we come to the Lord, when we know that we want to be set free, submit to the Lord and submit to the righteousness that you will lead your whole life from now onwards in righteousness. Seek for that holiness. Seek for that sanctification. So that the Lord may come and He may sanctify us on every area that, that we are struggling with. As we spoke about grace, 
some, some time back we spoke about grace, that we just need to hold on to that grace. It's a free gift for us. But we need to hold on to that grace. Because even over here, the righteousness is also given because we are under grace. But when we leave grace, when, when we leave grace, when we do our own things, when we go to sin, that's when we get enslaved. But their sin doesn't have any dominion over us because then we are under grace. How do we remain under grace? How do we hold on to the grace that the Lord has given us? Firstly, repentance. When we go for confession and we truly repent of our sins, that's when the Lord has completely taken it away. He has set us free from that very moment when we have repented. But let's look at sometimes that when we confess, but how can we after that fall back into sin? Let's look at Matthew chapter 18 verses 24 onwards. There are quite a few uh, verses over here. Can we open that? So we hear that Jesus is giving, telling us the parable, telling his disciples the parable of a king who wished to settle accounts among the slaves, among his slaves. Okay, so chapter 18 verses 24 onwards. Uh, I will read it, but I would like you all to just understand this as well while reading, if you can read it yourself as well. When he began the reckoning, that is the king, when he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him and he could not pay. His lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all the possessions to be made and payments to be made. So the slave fell on his knee before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. So the slave asked the king, have patience with me. I will pay you everything. He knelt down. He pleaded to the king. This is the same way we confess our sins. When we confess our sins, we truly repent and we ask the Lord, forgive me Lord for the things that I have done. And if we go to the next verse, and out of pity for him, that is out of mercy for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him from the death. death. The same way our Lord Jesus, when we go and confess to him, we repent to him, we ask the Lord for the forgiveness. He will have mercy on us because our Lord is merciful. He has mercy on us. He, can, he forgives us from our sins. He gives us that new life and he says, okay, you go ahead, go into the world and live a new life, a free life. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his slave, uh, fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the truth, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him. So he went out, the slave went out and asked his, the people who owed him, owe me the money, give me the money, tell me what, what, whatever you have to pay me, pay, pay it back to me. And his fellow slave pleaded back with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. So when his fellow slave came and asked him for forgiveness or asked him for forgiving the debt that he owed, he did not have the same mercy on him. He refused. And then when he went out and threw that person into the prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went out and reported to, the, to, the, to their Lord all that had taken place. Then this Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all the debt because you had pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave, as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay the entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do this to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Amen? Amen. So this tells us that many times we go for confession, we ask for mercy, we ask for repentance, we feel like the sin is taking over us, we ask the Lord. The Lord forgives us that very moment through the confession, through the sacrament of confession. 
the Lord forgives us. But when we go back to the world, how are we with, with the people who we are with? Whether it's the people who we cannot forgive. Sometimes we forgive, but can we truly love them? That is a, that is a question even I was thinking about all these uh, months maybe and you know sometimes that okay maybe it's very easy for me I'll say okay I forgive I forgive whoever the person is that maybe I've hurt or anything like that throughout my life because you know we have been coming to the prayer we learned it that we should forgive we should not keep any unforgiveness in our hearts so we forgive but then I started thinking do I am I able to love that person again or do I just forgive and just let go let that person go I don't really uh, I'm not the same loving person, I'm not the same friendly person with that person again. Are we, are we able to do that? Are we able to love the people and um, even if we may forgive, but are we able to love the people again? But the Lord said, love your enemies, love everyone as I have loved you. So let's ask the Lord, teach us how to love, teach us how to love as you have loved us. That is one thing we need to ask the Lord, teach us how to love. Because through that love, we will be able to lead that life of righteousness. The love will be able to lead that life of freedom that the Lord is calling for us. Because if we are not able to love, that means again something is stopping us. Something is stopping us from leading that full life of freedom. And the second thing is faith. Through faith, a lot of times now we may know that we need healing. Or we may know that we need this freedom. We need the Lord to set free. We may know it. We come for the prayer every time. We even say it. We say it. We, we pray. We have the anointing sessions. We pray it. But do we really believe in that? A lot of times we have go for adorations. Sometimes are we in the adoration just because it's a ritual? Like, oh, uh, we sing the songs. We pray. We, we, we say, okay, we need to pray these particular prayers. We say this. We do this. Is it just a ritual? Or do we really believe that it is Jesus who is present there? That it is the same Jesus who died for us, who came on earth, who is living, who is active. He is present in that sacrament. He is present in the Eucharist who is there in the, but during our adorations. Because a lot of times we go and do all of that and we say, maybe we go and do this adoration and uh, people tell us that we will get deliverance with this. But we will only get the deliverance if we believe that Jesus is there and He is delivering us. He is setting us free. But if we do not have that faith, it will not work. It's not a ritual. It's not something that it that is prescribed. That we do this and you will get this. Pray this and you will be free. It's not a prescription like a medicine. Uh, some A girl I knew long back, um, maybe when I was much younger, uh, youth, uh, that time this girl was telling me um, that you know that she um, throughout her life that she was facing this uh, hurt feelings um, of not being uh, not being accepted uh, in her beauty in the way she looks the way she looks the way she whether it's a height her um, skin color anything like that she was not feeling um, accepted. And she had a lot of hurt wounds throughout her life. Because many people would have passed judgments on her, would have looked at her and looked aside. So a lot of these kind of things that she was going through, she was telling me about this. And she said that I've gone for so many retreats and um, you know, I know that I need inner healing. And I've gone for inner healing sessions, I've gone for inner healing retreats and I know that I require inner healing in this particular area. And I was thinking in my mind at that moment that if we have gone for so many, that time I didn't say anything because I didn't know what to say. But I was thinking in my mind that um, if we have gone for so many inner healing sessions, if we have gone for so many prayer, then why is the Lord not healing her? Like why is she not having that inner healing, what she is looking for? And over time I have realized that we need that faith. That if we keep telling everybody, I need healing in this, I need healing in that, you have gone for it, you have, you have prayed, you have, uh, you have had a special dedicated inner healing session. But if you are not having faith that the Lord has set you free at that very moment, then it, you have not been set free. Then you will keep doing it, it may not be then, maybe 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line, it will keep.
keep eating your head. It will keep telling you that you are not good enough, that you don't look good enough, that your height is not good enough, your color is not good enough. Because it's no, you're not trusting in the Lord. You're not trusting that the Lord has set you free from those feelings, from those hurts. Um, a lot of times we may have these uh, memories from the past, our past sins or some memories that may come to our mind, some visuals that may come to our mind of things that we might have seen earlier. Maybe we have come out of it, we have confessed about it, but still those memories and visuals come into our mind. Mm -hmm. In those moments, let's offer those visuals, those memories to the Lord. Let's invite the Lord in those moments. Ask the Lord to pour His precious blood upon each and every memory, each and every moment, each and every visuals that is coming in your mind. Pour the precious blood of the Lord. Because the precious blood of the Lord has power, has power to redeem us. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, the, the blood of the Lord redeems us. The blood of the Lord has power to forgive our sins. So the precious blood of the Lord is a, in a, a big topic in itself. But Use that. Use that as a weapon. Ask the precious blood of the Lord because He sets you free to His death. So His blood has power. Pour the precious blood upon those moments and offer those moments, those circumstances, situations, hurts, feelings. People have said certain things. Offer those things to the Lord. Do not keep talking about it. Do not keep remembering it or telling anyone about it. Tell the Lord. Lord, this is what I am going through. You come into that situation, you take control. It's not me, it's you. Pour the precious blood of the Lord in that situation and slowly, my dear brothers and sisters, we will receive our healing in those for those moments, those memories, those situations. Sometimes the devil tries to put all these visuals and a lot of things from, from our past into our mind to just trigger us. But when you put, pour the precious blood upon that, it will move away. The Satan doesn't have any control on that. Satan doesn't have any sin doesn't have any dominion over you because you are a child of God. Amen. Amen. And um, lastly, it's also the Holy Spirit. Now, things that we can't do, let's ask the Holy Spirit because the, a lot of these things, as we said, we know that we cannot do these uh, certain things that we want to do, and we do things that we don't want to do. In that time, that means our body is weak, our flesh is weak. Because we are resorting to the needs of the flesh. But our spirit, if it is with the Holy Spirit, if it is filled with the Holy Spirit, it gives us strength. So ask the Holy Spirit to come. He strengthens us. He renews us. And He makes us, He helps us in those situations where we can't do it. But the Lord will take control. And the Lord will come and give us what we are lacking. Let's, today in this anointing session especially, this whole day, uh, seems to be very much that we are preparing for the Lord. We are asking the Lord to set us free, to give us that freedom for His coming. So let's in the let's think about all the sins that we have to confess, especially in this next one week, since we have a lot of opportunities to do that. And in the anointing session as well, let's speak to the Lord. Let let's remember all those things that we need deliverance from, that we need to be set free, and ask the Lord the Holy Spirit to come and help us to lead those righteous life. Lead that righteous life and not go back to sin. Lead a holy life and ask the Lord to sanctify us in every, every area of our life. Every memory, every moment, every situation, anything that anyone has spoken to us. May the Lord come and sanctify us and heal us in those situations. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word that was spoken today. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we are called to be righteous. We are called to be holy because you are holy. My brothers and sisters, this is the last meeting for this year. We're all looking forward to Christmas, New Year and a new beginning. But remember, with every new beginning, what we need is God's presence. Because without Him, nothing in our life will have meaning. Nothing in our life will change unless we bring the Lord into our life. Today, as we heard the word, if there's any sin, any unforgiveness, anything 
in our heart, in our life, that is standing against the block, as a block, for the Lord to work. Let us bring before the Lord today those situations, those people who have hurt us, people who have cheated us, people who have brought us down, including our own selves, where we have condemned ourselves, spoken negatively about our situation and our life. Let us repent for all those things and ask the Lord to take complete control. The word of God says the name of Jesus is the name above all names. And it is the name before which all things bow down in heaven, on earth and in the sea and even under the sea. Whatever may be your situation right now, at this name of Jesus, it will bow down. All the chains that are holding us will be set free by this name of Jesus. Word of God says in 1 Corinthians 1.30, Jesus Christ is the very source of our life. He is our wisdom, our justification, our sanctification and our redemption. This promise, my brothers and sisters, covers all the areas of our life. So let us call upon the name of Jesus. Bring before Him all the chains, all the sin, all your weakness, everything that we need God to work in our life. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have a victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have to have to face your
Many of us have been waiting for a blessing in many areas of our life and we feel that the year has come to an end and we have not experienced God's blessings. God's promises to us have not been fulfilled and we are wondering what could be the reason? What is it that is making this delay or causing this delay in our life? But you have got, as Zanita said, freedom, righteousness, Victory is all available. You and me can say it, but if we don't believe it in our heart, it will not happen. It has nothing to do with God, but it has to do with you and me. What we declare today, if you are going to say that this year is already over, the next year I don't know what is going to happen. It may not be what I want it to be. If you are going to face the fear that the coming year what is going to happen? Brothers and sisters, I tell you, believe in the word of God. Because the word of God is eternal. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God never passes away. If God has proclaimed you are blessed, you will be blessed. If he has said you will be set free, you are set free. If your womb is blessed, your womb will be blessed. If you have got a job, God has promised you a job, that will come your way. Today, we are going to stand here victorious. We are not going to stand defeated. We are not going to stand wondering and in fear. We are going to stand and say, that I am a child of God. Nothing, nothing will stand against God's work in my life. God's purpose in my life. The coming year has everything that God has planned for me. That God I am victorious. I am healed. I 
into every day of the new year, coming year. That God's healing, God's grace, God's power is going before me from this moment on. From this moment on, I'm going to be walking into the God's grace. I'm going to be walking into the blessings of God. I'm going to be walking in the fullness of God. I will not lack anything. I will not lack anything good in my life. Because God, my Savior, God, my Redeemer, is with me. The Word of God is with me. The name of Jesus is with me. The blood of Jesus is with me. I have no fear. I have no worry. I have no anxiety. I have no doubt. Because God's healing reign is upon me. This very moment is removing every fear, every doubt, every sin, every worry from my life. This very moment.
Jesus. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is touching three wombs today over here. And the coming year, they will stand and testify that three wombs are being blessed today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you. Two brothers are going to get a job very soon. And they will start working in the month of Jan itself. Before that, you will get your appointment letter. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We worship and adore you. Many, many people sitting today in this room will be given the gift of preaching and you will stand here and preach for the glory of God. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, healing touches upon many of you that he's giving you the grace to forgive the people in your life. It's only when you forgive that you will be set free. And God is giving you that grace today to forgive those people. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and we praise you, Lord Jesus. We worship and we adore you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all the blessings, for the healings. Thank you for all that you've done for us, O oh Lord Jesus, in this year. Thank you for all the seen and the unseen blessings, Lord. Thank you for the prayers that you did not answer, Lord, for us. Because we truly believe it was meant for our good. That all things work for the good for those who love you, trust you, and call according to your purpose. We believe, Lord, that we are called. And everything in our life is for your glory alone. Brothers and sisters, this one moment, let us pray for the one who's sitting on the right of you and on the left of you. Maybe someone you know, maybe someone, a stranger, it doesn't matter. You may know their need or you may not know their need. But God knows what they need. With all faith, with all faith, because you're standing in the gap today in the name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus and by the cross of Jesus. And you, as a child of God, are going to bless the person on the right and on the left of you. That they are going to be blessed in all that they do. Thank you, Lord Jesus, and we praise you, Lord Jesus. Bless my brothers and sisters, Lord Jesus. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord Jesus. All praise. All honor and all glory belong to you and you alone. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. How are you all? Sorry for the first time I came here now doing this uh, charismatic prayer. This is a little bit odd hour for us. Um, and Sunday being busy day, even though I like to interact and then come and to give you blessings and messages and so on. If you don't make it, we'll see the new year how things go. And uh, <clears throat> this is the letter I was supposed to have read. Last time thinking that I came, it was around uh, 4.30, no, around 4.45 I came last Sunday. It was only Malayal Mesaram. I read out now, for the English I have read it out. Other prayer groups are most, I think most of the prayer groups are covered. This is all the letter from our Bishop Paolo Martinelli uh, concerning the election that took place, Caris election that took place and the result of this. <coughs> to the members of Caris and the UAE in all its ex ex expressions, dear sisters and brothers, greetings of peace and joy in the Lord. Following the results of the election on 12th November 2023, and the subsequent counting of the ballots by Father Michael Fernandez, Father Varghese Cody Pardon, and Mr. Eklinson Joseph in the presence of Father Derek D'Souza, my secretary, I have been proposed the elected list of candidates to be accepted as a new team of NSC for the United Arab Emirates. I have not found any reason to reject this election or to object to the candidacy of any of the elected members. Therefore, I accept this election of the following members and install them as Caris National Service of Communion, NSC team, for the term 2024-2026. Kretzen Joseph Coordinator, Edward Joseph Assistant Coordinator, Declan Alvero Secretary, Joe D. Silva Treasurer, Ministry Coordinators. Aro Kiraj, Salas Efrain, Bonaventure uh, Chukwanonso, Jose K. Jose, Menino de Silva, Rocky Fernandez. 
The new team will be functional from 1st to January 2024 and their term will end on 31st to December 2026. I have appointed Reverend Father Andrew Francisco Fernandez Oye from CAP as the new National Spiritual Assistant of CARIS, effective from 1st to December 2023. Reverend Father Vargas Cody Pradhan Sani Oye from CAP will continue as a Joint National Spiritual Assistant. I recommend this new team to your prayer and full collaboration. I wish them every success for the events and the evangelization for the glory of God. I thank Reverend Father Michael Fernandez Y from CAP for his service to Caris during his term as a National Spiritual Assistant. I also thank the outgoing team of NSC members for their hard work and zeal for the charismatic movement. God will reward you for your service to the church. Continue to serve the Lord and assist the church in her mission of evangelization. Given at our curia in Abu Dhabi on the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception on the 8th day of December in the year of the Lord, 2023. Paolo Martinelli, wife from Cap, Apostolic Vicar of Southern Arabia. Any doubt from this letter? No. So, very clear? <laughs> okay. So, I'm glad to see even today. The other day also, last week I came for uh, SRM Malayalam. <coughs> and here also I see the children and the teens, adults and so on, they mix to group. It's a lovely feeling. And it's a wonderful moment to gather together like that with the various age group to praise and worship the Lord and to learn the word of God, to share the word of God. Thank you. God bless you. Okay, see you. Thank you. Gracious Lord, we praise and thank you for your marvelous deeds. For all shafts of blessings and your trooping spirit upon these children, parents, elders and all those who have gathered here and those who are not able to participate today. We keep them all under your gentle bosom asking of your grace to give them good health, mind and knowledge and a blessed new year along with the celebration of the birth of you, Lord. Bless them, lead them gently and guide them, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Father. This is actually a small testimony to the children's ministry. Uh, I know most of you all were at the party and you all saw the beautiful skit uh, that the kids presented. Uh, the, during the first week when uh, Sister Kitty had given them the skit, they were really excited. But given that we only had three weeks of practice, I mean three weeks were there. The first week we did uh, present it to them and then they were all excited and you know they were like, we'll do it, we'll do it. But then uh, the following two weeks we didn't have practice and when we actually had the online session with them on Zoom, uh, Sister Raina and me were kind of a little disappointed because most of them didn't know their lines. There were a few kids uh, who really remember their lines and the rest didn't. And I was like, okay sister, now what do we do the following week because we had GCCRS. Uh, Sister Raina and me prayed and when we said, you know what, we we'll surrender it to the Lord and all glory to God. The second week when we had the Zoom meeting, everyone knew their line. Everyone knew when they had to say it and all glory to God. They did a beautiful presentation last week. God bless each one of them for their contribution. They remember their lines. Uh, and I remember telling them, see, even if you don't, if you forget your line, just say something because the audience is not going to know. It's only Raina, ma'am, Kitty, ma'am, and me who will know that you all said the wrong line. So it's okay. So all glory to God. They did a fabulous job, and thank you, children, for all that you have done. God bless. <laughs> Thanks to God, my Redeemer, thanks for all the 
windows are wide Thanks for times, nobody memory Thanks for Jesus by my side Thanks for blessing, Bobby springtime Thanks for the good story for Thanks for tears I never forgotten Thanks for peace within my soul Psalms 57 9 says I sing a praises Lord among the peoples and I praise your name among the nations as we are closer to this year it will take maybe two hours for me to finish all these testimonies. There were troubles, troubles. When we get these troubles and problems, or we, we come to experience the glory of God. Uh, I think last time I have uh, mentioned about a, a testimony which an hour pay made for the employees and fully recovered except one employee who was already terminated, he went and joined in a government job in Iraq. So I was trying to get this man somehow because it, it comes 3000 plus. Since it's from my side, I thought I decided I need to get. I contacted the HR said, no, he's not picking up the call. I asked them, give the number. Then I started calling him. He was picking up the call. Hi Abraham, brother, how are you? From, okay, now it's eight months. I was calling, I was in touch with him. And it, that time onwards he was telling, I am ready brother, I am ready to pay. Give the company's account, everything. We gave the company's account, but then there was a sanction from for all your US dollars to be processed in Iraq. Then he said, brother, what I'll do? I can hand over the money to anyone. I said, it's, that's not the correct procedure. Somehow I'll make it short. At last, last month, this is done. This money was given back. Just money. after eight months, you can just, you should not yeah, pick up the call, right? That's the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Okay, second one. Remember me one by one. I'm having uh, after this uh, needle phobia. You know needle phobia? Yes. <laughs> injection. <laughs> Even I see somebody is getting injected, I used to like faint. I talk a lot, you know, people say, oh, you're a bunch talking and all, but this kind of things comes. So this is to show the glory of God. Slowly, slowly. So, when you get this fear or trouble, what you do? You run away from the problem? What I learned is, get the help of the Holy Spirit, cut through the problem. You face the problem. You run away, how much you run? You will run and run. And this problem also of, of the over, over payment, since this was a manual payment, nobody would have noticed. Unless and until I would have, I explained to them, this has happened. Because there's a problem, there's a mistake. If you try to hide and hide, you will have tensions, problem, sleepless night. I went straight away, getting the help, help of the Holy Spirit. Then the only thing I realized this happened. Nobody would have noticed. I would have just said, this is the payment for the overtime payments. So to show the glory at all, no, this case. So this, to overcome this fear, all the time I take the help of the Holy Spirit, 2 Timothy 4, 18 says, or what says? <laughs> <laughs> the Lord will rescue you, or you will attack. Then, Acts 1, 8, when the Holy Spirit comes upon me, you will have power. <coughs> then I start to, okay, uh, every like two, three months, I used to give this blood test, blood test. I used to let, just, <coughs> first like it, getting away from that one, I don't look on that. Later I start, start looking at this, slowly started fading. One time, I have uh, decided to go for a blood donation. My, mine is uh, like a 
or positive, uh, what is that? Dollar, no? Universal. Universal dollar. So somebody wanted that uh, blood. I said, I'm ready. I was getting a chance to show this one. I went with my uh, co brother and Sharjah blood bank, I think. But the blood test is done, everything okay. Then I started taking the blood. Then I told that Malayali, sometimes I might faint. <laughs> he was getting angry. We didn't tell you this before. Within seconds. <laughs> then some trainee local girls also were there. They ran away. They thought, God. <laughs> That's the way I was lying down the whole time. Then I decided somehow I need to get him through. Then last week only, I worked in a public holiday, then I got a chance to get an off. Because the weekends, this uh, the banks, these are closed. Then I got the help of my cousin, I asked him, are you free? He's a, a male nurse working for the ambulance, helicopter ambulance. He said, he's ready. He came from Umarka and took me. First I tried in Sharjah. They said, uh, uh, have you gone to India uh, recently? I said, just uh, last month I came back. No, no, three months required. They thought, oh my God, this time also gone. Then I checked in uh, uh, DHA. They said, uh, yeah, that, that, uh, Jada. They were ready, even last week also you come from India, they are ready to get it. It's okay. So I went over there, then only I told, I have this problem I want to overcome. Don't worry, brother, that's the over there. I went over there, I asked him to take the video also. <laughs> I want to show. I prayed. He was taking the picture, the video. Then I took my phone also, Zoom, uh, not Zoom, um, uh, the Skype call or something. I called Ivan also. Ivan? Oh! <laughs> it really gone through. So I will continue donating blood also. That is the one. So my elder daughter Emma also joined and in Kerala one uh, banking group. That also on the testimony. And there are so many plenty. I don't want to keep you like boring. And all glory, honor to you, O Lord. Thank you for giving me one more opportunity to stand before this congregation to glorify and lift your name. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The